I did have one experience, I think, uh, back in 1975, I think, which was a life-changing experience, and that was because uh, I was with Greenpeace at that time, and we had come up with this idea of uh, protecting whales by putting our bodies between the harpoons and the whales. And we were reading a lot of Gandhi back then, and we thought, hey, well, you know, this would work. And I found myself in a little uh, rubber boat behind uh, a pod of eight magnificent sperm whales that were fleeing for their life. And behind us was this 150-foot-long uh, uh, Soviet harpoon vessel that was bearing down on the, on the whales. And every time the harpooner tried to take a shot, I would maneuver and block his path. And it was working for a while until the captain came down the catwalk rather angrily, and he screamed into the ear of the uh, harpooner. And then he looked at us, smiled, and brought his finger across his neck like this. And that's when I realized Gandhi wasn't going to pull us through that day. And a few minutes later, there was this horrendous explosion, and this uh, harpoon flew over our head and slammed into the back of one of the uh, whales in the pod. And there was this incredible scream. It was a very human-like scream. And I had, it took me completely by surprise. I didn't expect a whale to sound like that. Suddenly, the ocean erupted, and I turned in time to see the whale throw himself straight at the harpooner to protect his pod. And uh, the harpooner just pulled the trigger and at point blank range set another harpoon into the head of the whale and uh, it exploded, there was blood and gore and everything everywhere and the whale fell back in the water screaming and in agony and as he turned I caught his eye and uh, he looked straight at me and now he dove again and I saw a trail of bloody bubbles coming straight at our boat and he came up and out of the water at an angle so that the next move was to come forward and crash down on top of us and I looked up into this eye and it was right there, and an eye the size of my fist, really. And, I, and what I saw in there really changed my life, because the whale understood what we were trying to do. Because the easiest thing to do at that moment was to come forward, but instead I could see the effort he made as he went back and then slid back into the sea, and I saw his eye disappear beneath the surface, and then he died. The whale could have taken our lives and chose not to do so. So I feel personally indebted to that whale, and had, you know, I've tried to save as many of his kind ever since. Our job has been easier over the last few years because the public relations uh, garbage that these people put out, you know, calling us high seas pirates and eco-terrorists, actually works in our favor. Scares the hell out of the people that we're opposing. And when they see us, they, they run. And so uh, when we just recently encountered the Japanese whaling fleet in Antarctica, it was really uh, every time we caught them, they would run. And we were able to prevent them from killing whales for over 15 days, and we chased them for 4,000 miles uh, because uh, they were afraid of us. Oriental Bluebird, or should I say the SS Whale Meat, uh, please uh, remove yourself from these waters. You're in violation of international conservation regulations. We're acting in accordance with the United Nations World Charter for Nature and implementing these regulations. You're in a whale sanctuary and you're assisting in illegal activity. Remove yourself from these waters immediately.